have to have some leverage of competency. The sad part is I have no swag, dog. <laughs> Man, I get to do a breakdown, and I get to do them right here. Roman Wilson, champion, <laughs> national champion for Michigan. Welcome to the Cut to a Podcast. How are you, young fella? Yes, sir. First of all, thank you for having me. I'm doing great, man. It feels yeah. good to be in this position in my life. Well, where are you these days? I see, I see your jersey in the back, but I don't want to assume – that you're at the house. You know, when you win the national championship and you got that Jordan on on the jersey, you could be anywhere. You know, I heard I hear Michigan fans are everywhere. Yeah. No, I'm I'm still in Michigan. I got pro day in a couple of days. So Okay. All right. All right. So I'm gonna read, I'm gonna just read off some things. Um and you let me know if I'm if I'm off or on. Well, 5'10, 186 pounds, estimated. To have run four four in a forty, but at the combine, what was your time? Uh, four three nine. Uh, honestly, oh, I'm four three nine. I'm, I'm upset with that time. I thought I was going to do better. I still believe I can do better, but I know I'm not here to run forty something. I'm here to play football. Yeah. Ron Wilson, Michigan national champs, twenty twenty three, second team, all Big Ten conference, led the led the team, led the national championship with seven hundred. 89 receiving yards tied for ninth in FBS with 12 receiving touchdowns. Best game, Nebraska, Eastern Carolina, Purdue. Worst games, Penn State. I'm just reporting it. Don't shoot the messenger. Iowa and Michigan State lined up in the slot pretty much almost 60% of the time, 450, 458, out wide, 305. Games played, 46, 107 receiving yards, um, receptions, 1,707 receiving yards, 20 touchdowns, one drop, 2023, seven in his whole collegiate career, 38 first downs last year, 75 total. One of the things that I notice about you immediately, savvy route runner. You know exactly how and where you need to be in zone coverage. You know how to outrun man coverage as well. But you really have an understanding of this offense. Tell me about how you develop into the player you have become heading to, into this year's draft. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's no secret that um, – you know, we're a run-heavy team, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And um, coming into my senior year, I wanted to figure out a way how I can become more of an option for this team to, to utilize, mm -hmm. not in a way to help help this team win. You know, what can, what can I do that I'm already doing that I can get better at? You know, how much more film can I watch? How much, how much better can I get at running my routes? How, how can I lower my drop rate when it's already low enough? You know, that was some things I was going into. How can I be open? When the when the play breaks down, uh, that that was the big thing for me. Just being a always trying to be an option, even when I'm not even looked at as an option. Um, always being there for my quarterback, trying to get the first down. Always just being reliable, like being consistent. That was a big thing for me. Was if I can be consistent, if I can be reliable, I feel like you know I'm gonna put myself in a situation where I have no they have no choice but to come to me. And I felt like you know, I did a good job. And but my ultimate goal was just to help a team win. You know, I feel like I, I did enough to do that. Well, this, as a player, you hear about it. I grew up listening and watching Charles Woodson, Desmond Howard. So understanding this rivalry between Ohio State and Michigan. Is that rivalry today as thick and seeming the way the media plays it up? Is it what it is? Or has it died off a little bit? Uh, I mean, I, I definitely think it is. I remember the first time we played Ohio State, I was walking down the tunnel and like a little, I'd call it a scruffle. It, it wasn't no fight. But I mean, just like people trying to get into altercations pregame every single year, something like that happens. I feel like the the, the trash talking goes to new, like a new level. Um, you know, social media goes to a new level. It's definitely still there. My, the hate's still there. But at the end of the day, like you see the love too, because uh, we had a player get hurt, one of our team captains, and, you know, you see the um, 
the camaraderie between the two yeah. teams. I mean, we're still humans at the end of the day, but you know, doing anything you anything you can do to try to win this game. You talk about wanting to make yourself an option, wanting to make an impact as much as you can, especially on a run heavy team. As someone who followed this Michigan team all season, it felt like you were one of the vocal leaders, especially heading into the playoff and in the national championship. Has that always been you? Is that something you had to learn in college, or have you always just found yourself in a leadership role like that? Uh, no, nah, definitely not. I grew up uh, like I was the youngest, and I just lived with my dad. I was pretty, uh, pretty independent growing up, kind of mature for my age, and I kind of like fell into that role this year. You know, I wasn't a team captain, but I felt like I was a leader for the receivers in the room. But there was a lot of young guys who, you know, had to play. Um, spe- like just being young, like that's hard for them, and. I felt like it was up to me to show them like how stuff's really done. Like, especially at Michigan on a run heavy team, like we go into a game like Penn state where we, we throw the ball like under 15 times. Like I have to be that guy to be there for, for the younger guys. Like, Hey man, like you still got an opportunity to go in and affect this game. Like, yeah, the ball may not be coming, but you still have a chance to go out there and, you know, and, and inflict your will on someone else. You know, if you want to, like, don't be that guy who's going to drag the team down because you want the ball. You know, that was that was a big thing for me. It was just like be a leader, show these guys how to handle business, how to like watch film, how to put in work before and after practice, how to practice. And I just, I just felt like I was like responsible for that. I want to get into that, but I just I, I was looking at my notes and it just I had a start. Uh, so I got to bring it up. You're from Maui. Yeah. I uh, went to a um, juggernaut. Out yeah, St. <laughs> St. Uh, Louis. Yeah, it's it's on it's the high school's on Oahu. So, yep. Yeah, and if I believe correctly, my old quarterback, I uh, was coaching up there, um, Darnell Arsenal. Yeah, that was yeah. my quarterback at the University of Utah. Yeah, no, he's legit, real deal. Yeah, I met him a few, only a few times, but cool guy. Yeah, um, and so I just know, man, St. Louis is. Uh, Man, the guys who play out in Hawaii, uh, man, they come they come well prepared and know how yeah. to play uh, college yeah. football, man. So uh, congratulations to you yeah, thank on you. that. This is something I do have to ask, though, because I'm a wide receiver. How, how did you balance wanting to play wide receiver and, and displaying your athleticism, knowing – Hey, I want to go to the league and, sh- and and be a wide receiver, but also knowing what the DNA of the team is, which is running the football. Yeah. H- how did you balance not being selfish, but understanding that the team goals can exceed your personal goals, you know, more than you can imagine? How did you keep yeah. that balance? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I got a lot of personal goals in mind. Get this many yards, so many targets, whatever accolades, but. For me, um, you know, I had to come to the conclusion that if if this team goes to the national championship, this is only more opportunities for me to be able to show who I am. And, you know, I I always believe that I can be an NFL receiver. I always believe I can be a top guy on any team. But, it, you know, in the circumstances, it was just like whatever opportunity you give me, I'm going to make sure I make the most of it. You know, I'm only going to get a few and, you know, few is just going to have to be enough. You know, I'm going to have to be able to show the world who I am with just a few opportunities. And, but if it was weird, because it was like, if we win games, that's, that's just as good for me. You know, yeah. if I get three touchdowns and we lose, that's, that's not really helping me. But if we win, 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 and I'm, and I'm being a reason why we're winning, then that's like the best situation for me, part of this team. Like I'd rather be on a team that's going to the Super Bowl than, you know, not making the playoffs. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. What, uh, what's something about your game that you really love that you, you know, that you can hang your hat on and then something about your game that possibly, you know, uh, the next level you're going to have to refine and, and improve. Yeah. I feel, I feel like my um, route running is, like you said, it's just very underrated. I feel like I know, I feel like I know what I'm doing. I feel like I'm attacking certain leverages. I know what releases I like to work on. Um, Going to the next level, I think the, the biggest thing for me is just creating more separation. I feel like I create separation, but I just I just want to create more. You know what I mean? I just want to, you know, fight through contact, things like that. And I feel like if I can just get better on everything I'm doing, then, you know, all that's going to come naturally. Before we jumped on, you said you were loving this process. 
all the Michigan guys seem to be, especially on offense, under this very hyper microscope. And, and it feels like it's on the top of your mind because you keep talking about the running game. What's something people get wrong when discussing you, JJ, uh, Cornelius, all the offensive guys outside of, you know, Blake, who I think everyone understands. Yeah, he was the running back. That's easy to talk about. But what's the biggest misconception you've heard about you guys throughout this whole process? Yeah, I mean, uh, the biggest thing for me that like pisses me off like every day, they like to say like JJ can't throw. I feel like, bro, he, he's probably he's probably one of the best quarterbacks I've ever been around. Unbelievable arm, unbelievable leader. And I just feel like he's going to have such a great career in the NFL. For me, I feel like people say that, you know, I can't be a number one receiver. And I feel like I definitely can be that guy. I feel like I've shown it. I've shown flashes of it. But with enough um, production, I feel like I can easily be that guy. And especially uh, CJ, I feel like he's such an elite route runner as well. People don't really talk about him as much as they um, as much as they should. I feel like his um, releases off the line are, you know, close to none. And I feel like um, whatever team picks him up is going to get it such an elite playmaker. I got two plays that we we'll, we'll, that we can highlight. Talk about understanding zone coverage, toughness, keeping your eye on the football even though you know the outcome. Yeah. So, going against Maryland, seam route knows exactly what's going to happen. He knows it. So I'll let it play through. Goes over there. Look. Yow! <laughs> tell me what you're thinking. <laughs> so tell me what's going through your mind as you're starting to gather up your steps. Because as you're gathering, you have a few milliseconds to think about, hmm, how is this going to work out? Take us through. I mean, I'm running the scene, but I know, like, I can, I can see the dude right there. Yeah. But in my head, I'm just – Hey, you got to get this first down. You got to get the ball moving. Help this team out. Let's let's get something going. Okay. At the same time, like I'm not really thinking about getting hit, but I like I, I know what the outcome is. I know I'm gonna get boomed, but you know all I'm thinking about is just, just catch this ball. When you yep. get hit, and just make sure you hold on to it. Everything's gonna be all right. It's gonna know? be all right. So yeah. when you're laying right here, does it feel like everything's gonna be all right? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm holding on to the ball, so everything is good. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I Look, it. you haven't got up, though. I'm not sure if <laughs> yeah. you think everything's going to be all right. <laughs> and he's waiting but for I'm, his guys to get down the field. He's giving them, yeah. giving them a chance yeah. to catch up to him. He, roll, he rolled over, too, trying to ke- catch his breath a little bit. <laughs> I was like, man, the oxygen down here next to the field is not productive. <laughs> Random question. Would, have you ever got hit that hard and you kind of, like, maybe toot it? No, nah. nah. <laughs> you be doing that? He said no. Nah. No, I haven't. But nah, I just I want to ask. You bring it up if it's not even. Here's, here's why. I play with a guy, Jeff King, against New Orleans Saints. A poor guy. He got hit running the scene route. Nah, that's crazy. Yes, and we call him King. Every time I see it, we call him King. Now, bro, he played. It was like a minute left into the half, and we were driving to kick a field goal. And so he uh, defense got a turnover, and we had to go back on the field. He played the remaining first half in poopy pants. No, nah, that's gross. I'm that's, that's, exactly. And, he, and so when he got hit, everybody said, King, you all right? He said, man, I – on, on myself. I said, man, I bet you did. He said, no, I really did. I looked, we looked, he said, oh. Nah, hey, hey, that's different. So here's <laughs> real different. So here's a route. You're going in motion. It's going against your rival, Ohio State. Love this play because you under, understand exactly your responsibility in zone coverage, man coverage, runs the indicator step, sets it up, crosses his feet. Great finish. No, that's, a, that's a bad finish. No, that's it. Oh, you fumbled? Well, I, I didn't technically fumble, but, you know. You, you fumbled. Yeah, you you got already, all... If you're already using technically, then you fumble. I, I, I was just trying to let you live. This was your highlight. <laughs> but you talk about your quarterback. People talk, talk about J.J. can't. He doesn't have touch. I love the touch of the throw. Anticipates. He looks like he's getting a little antsy, settles, settles his feet. Corner's trying to hold on to you. 
you do a good job. You throw your hands up just like a a, a, a forward or a, not a forward, but like a point guard or a shooting guard that's running around the screen. The guy, guy's grabbing you. So you're trying to show the, the referee if you dropped the pass, that it was pass interference. Yeah, I that's mean, a fumble. Oh, he, he – Bro, ain't, I crossed the line, but ain't no fumble, bro. <laughs> yeah, you crossed the line before he took the football from you. That is a indicator. As – as some people say, the eye in the sky don't lie, and I just saw right there. <laughs> <laughs> you crossed the goal, which makes you it bring, a touchdown, no. and then he snatched it you from. Bring this man on here, show him getting hey. boomed by uh, the yeah, boomed? <laughs> no, safety <laughs> and the most controversial play of that game. That's the, the two <laughs> plays. You but here's up. here's the thing: Have you not watched? They used to run them on ESPN. Now it's not like really there, but they're still happening. When uh, you got jacked up, that that's a you got jacked yeah, up. They don't bring the guy who got jacked up on to be like, hey, remember this? Like that's not- <laughs> a great catch, though. I love the catch. No doubt, no doubt. That's what I take away from that. Uh, but since we're talking about uh, that kind of stuff, Big Ten, which corners did you see that you were like, oh, this guy can play? Hmm. Yeah, um, honestly, like there's a lot of good um, corners in the Big Ten. You know, I was never really like matched up with him. Like, I, I never really was like, "Hey, one on one with this guy, he's following me around." It's never really like that. You know? Right. I don't, I don't really get pressed too often. Um, like, I can't. Me personally, I can't really say there's one guy because you know I never really had a battle with them. You know, you know what I mean? Sure. But they're, I mean, yeah, they're yeah. all great dudes. Like, they all have great film. I wanted to see if 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 the the white boy from Iowa like really stood out, but no, it yeah. seems like he just blended in. Yeah, no, no, he, uh, he, I think he's one of the best. I mean, he's really good. He understands football well, plays in a great system. He's a great athlete, great nose for the ball. Mm. I mean, he's probably one of the best. Well, Coach Harbaugh now leaving for the NFL, how did Coach Harbaugh, or did you feel Coach Harbaugh, helped you, help you prepare to go into the NFL as far as football and knowing that that's going to be your profession? I think uh, the best thing Coach Harbaugh did for me before he left, he just um, he kind of just turned me into a man, like um, kind of like the like no excuses type guy, but to a whole different level. Um, I broke my I broke my arm in the twenty one season, and uh, he called me up to his office and was just like, "Do you want to play?" I was like, "Yeah, I want to play." He's like, "All right, cool. Like you're playing." And so I, I put a cast on and I, I played and um, I got surgery. I played the next week, wow. and I and. I, for having a cast on as a receiver, like I was balling, like I had uh, two touchdowns against Penn State, and um, hmm. like, that was something that he made seem so simple that, like, at the time, like I didn't really understand that I could just go out there and play with a broken arm, and uh, he just like things like that, like every day, he's just things like that. He just makes the hardest thing just seem so easy to go out and do, like it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's that's not on my scouting report. Uh, <laughs> <as I'm looking. laughs> That sounds like the advice of a guy who drinks a lot of milk, which I know he does. <laughs> drink some, yeah, drink some whole milk. You're gonna be fine by next Saturday. Yeah. Throw some tussin on it. Throw some, yeah. throw some tussin on it. Cast it up. You'll be fine. Yeah. And that's well. Hey, we got you dropped the mic. We got to end on that note, bro. We got to let yeah. you go on that one. Let's go ahead and finish this breakdown of Roman Wilson. Just man, great kid. Uh, I am telling us that story about, about breaking his arm, throwing some tussing on him. Listen, all college coaches should be in prison. That's insane <laughs> advice. Prison? Insane wow. advice. Oh, yeah, we got, come on, we got Penn State. Like, you can't feel your face. Who gives? Get out there. Get some law. Like, that's, that's, that's insane. I just wasn't expecting you to say prison. Like, wow. I'm under the jail. All yeah. college coaches, get them out of here. All right, well let's let's go ahead and so well let's keep watching some of this film right here against Iowa. I just love how he could just create his own route tree up at the top right there, going in a motion, bang, man, just routes the guy, goes in a motion, sets him up, gives him a body body move that shows him, hey, I'm going across the middle. Then straightens it up, and as soon as the corner starts to sell his feet, crosses his face. Look at it. That's a good play. Now, Rose Bowl. 
Everybody watch this one. This is next level. I just talk about toughness. Run a little screen. Throws off his back foot. Now he has an opportunity. He can do two things. One, tiptoe out of bounds Mm -hmm. or show the league what he's about. He took the he took the decision to go out of bounds. Another another good route. Ah, look at that. That's not an easy catch either. No. No, especially anticipating a hit, whether or not it comes, you know that that, that corner is right there. He just happened to go for the ball instead of the tackle. Grows across. Understand he gets a little bit too high because it's a crossing route. Has to go underneath. You know, I always talk about sometimes running the wrong depth or the wrong play. Uh-huh. Sometimes it's the best play. I'm not saying he he's running the wrong play. All I'm just saying is depth is a little bit off. But because of his depth being off, that actually helps. Because if he runs it sh- shallow, then that allows the corner to cut his route off. But by right. running, a, running this mistake, then... Nice, great throw. I'm not sure why the quarterback who's already selling his feet, they talk about J.J., he's hit or miss. This is a great understanding. And I think I believe he gets hit or miss because he gets excited. Great job going up, extending. You think the DB closed his eyes on this one? He, I don't know what he was doing. DB misses. He's in a slot. He doesn't get the football, but... Watch how he sets up the timing. It's just a little snag route. Comes back inside wide open. It's just little plays like that I really love to show because it's tells, it tells me, can and will he work off the football? Now, this is just a cotton pick and shame that he does against uh, ECU. Sorry. Sets, sets it up, gets skinny. It's just a basketball player. Right, just understanding where he needs to be, fighting off the hand-to-hand combat because he's a strong guy, settles, settles his feet, understands that the guy is about to come hit him, doesn't know how close, settles his feet, braces for impact of the pass, but also of the run. That's smart. I'm talking I about just – yep. The falling down to help bring in the ball, you know what I mean? Stop yes. your momentum that's taking you across the yes. field. Yep. That's understanding your body, knowing how your body and balance, understanding what you need and how you need to be versus trying to do 9 million other things. Get skinny, fights through, sheds the, sheds the defender, touchdown. DB, done, DB, defender, whoever it is, doesn't have a chance. Just loves, comes up with speed. This is a simple play. But you know how many how many guys sometimes go too fast? So you have the scene and it's levels by the tight end. But if you or number three, if you're not understanding why you're running that route, you'll be trying to outrun the levels. Yeah. Comes inside, gives chops down just enough to settle the, the defender's feet, which he does. Then crosses his face, catches a football, unbelievable finish. Sorry, you on LV. <laughs> Good catch. Just outruns the defender. That's what kind of player that you get, man. He's explosive. Knows how to play ball. Understands his role but also knows that he is thirsty to do more. Mm-hmm. Like this kid, I think he can add a, add some speed. Uh, he's kind of sneaky good where you, you're not really sure how he's playing or why he's playing this position. And then next thing you know, you look up, uh, you know, he got four or five catches, two or three touchdowns, one or two touchdowns, 
four or five first downs, and all of a sudden you realize what you saw on film sometimes may not be the the player that you are dealing with at that moment. Roman Wilson is and was on a national championship team in college. He understands that mindset. He's tough. He's gritty. Especially when you're primarily playing in the slot, your, your timing, your suddenness, and changing up your tempo in your releases are extremely important, and he understands how to do that. I believe this is a kid that adds, and he doesn't have to be overcoached, and you don't have to have worry about him having soft ears. Coach Harbaugh has trained him to take criticism, be coached, and apply it immediately. Halftime adjustments, you saw Michigan, they made them game after game, and that has to do like do with players like Wilson who listen, that are coachable, teachable, and apply them. And it sounds like also coaching the players around him as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you talk about guys understanding their why. Watching him throughout the season, it also seems like he and his teammates understand his when, when to get him the ball, when it's his turn to make a big play. When I, and Michigan didn't need a ton of traditional big plays. They weren't winning games the final as the clock struck zero. Like they, they were pretty dominant. But big plays when they needed a first down, like that Maryland play you showed. Like you said, it was early that game. They did the first drive stalled out. They wanted to get that momentum going. That kick starts the game. It seemed like anytime they needed a big play, they leaned on him. And that is yeah. something I'll always probably overvalue, but there's something to that that I won't ignore. Well, getting, getting these players and understanding like what their roles are. Not every player that is drafted in the first, second, third round, they have to understand that their roles will change. What they were in college does not mean that they will be that same football player, that they will be used at that much usage. But can they adapt? Will they work hard? Will they work hard? And this is a kid who seems like he's going to work hard. You hear everybody that you talk to that that has bumped shoulders with him, man, they feel like they've gained something. We we have a bump shoulders, but we bump Zoom links. Sure. And we just learned something about him that we were not aware of. And it was really cool to hear what kind of player are you getting. And with Ron Wilson, you, you're getting a player – who knows how to play big time football? I mean, if he if he steps on a in a bear trap on Saturday morning, he will be ready for Sunday's game. He's not going to make that excuse. Yeah, I, I don't know how many bear traps he's going to fall into, but uh, look, depends where he gets drafted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Hey, man, this is a great episode. We had some good looks, some great film too. So much film out there. It's hard to really kind of figure out which film to grab, but really love that, love that film. Uh, love these guys, man. Look forward to it. We'll see you the next time.